Hey guys, what's up? We're gonna look at station arrays and the particle motion on station arrays. Quick recap though, how do station arrays form? This is a very simple setup, but it demonstrates exactly how all station arrays form. We've got an oscillator, which just vibrates. It's connected to a signal generator, which we can change the frequency. We have a pulley and a wire, which is being kept taut by some masses. So when this oscillator vibrates up and down, we get progressive waves that are emitted. That's our first bullet point that we say in the exam. When these progressive waves reach the pulley and the fixed end, they reflect, which is our second bullet point in the exam. So we emit progressive waves, these progressive waves reflect. Then the really important part, the emitted and the reflected waves interfere. And the resulting interference pattern is known as a stationary wave. On the right hand side, I've just shown you the fundamental um, station wave pattern that forms when you do this setup. And this is the lowest frequency and the longest wavelength. And there's a couple of important features that you get on a station wave. The first is that there is no net transfer of energy. Progressive waves transfer energy. Stationary waves have no net transfer of energy. They store energy within the oscillation. The second feature is that not all points experience the same amplitude. We have nodes, which I'm gonna label as N, which are positions of zero amplitude. And we have antinodes, which I'm going to label in this video as A, which are positions of maximum amplitude of oscillation. So if you see point A, it's gonna vibrate with the biggest and points here are gonna oscillate with smaller and smaller amplitudes. And then at the node, there is no amplitude there. If this is the fundamental frequency F naught, if we double the frequency to two F naught, we get what, what is known as the second harmonic. This is the next stationary wave pattern. And we can do the third harmonic and the fourth harmonic, but these very specific frequencies, we get different stationary waves pattern, patterns being formed. This has got extra nodes and antinodes. So we've got a node in the, there at the fixed ends. We have a node in the middle, but we've now got two antinodes in this stationary wave pattern. So there we have it. A quick recap on stationary waves, but now let's really zoom in and focus on what are the particles doing on these stationary waves. So this is the most basic um, stationary wave that you can get. And this is what we know, we've know we seen is called the fundamental in this setup that we've been used. It depends on what setup, whether you've got open pipes or closed pipes, but we're just gonna look at the stationary wave pattern on a, on, a, on a string that's fixed at both ends. And because it's fixed, we get a node at both ends. It's really important that we remember that nodes have zero amplitude. So the points here do not oscillate, they just stay fixed. So letter N is nodes. Letter A represents the antinode. And the antinode is the position of maximum amplitude. So a particle at point A will vibrate down, then it will vibrate up with the greatest amplitude and particles closer to the nodes will oscillate with smaller amplitudes and they get smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually you get to the node where there is zero amplitude of oscillation. What's important to note on all points along this stationary wave is that they all oscillate with the same frequency. They will all move down together, then they move back up together at exactly the same frequency but they have a different amplitude. So you can see if I call this point, um, let's call this point X here, that oscillates with a greater amplitude than point Y and a greater amplitude than point Z. So they have the same frequency, but oscillate with different amplitudes. And what is really important is that they are all in phase. They all move down together, then they move back up together as the stationary wave vibrates and oscillates. So we call all points between two nodes, we say that they're all in phase. We've got a couple of other features that we just need to look at. We've got here a node to a node, and that is equal to half a wavelength. So this distance from a node to a node is equal to half a wavelength. The distance from a node to an antinode, therefore, is lambda over four, a quarter of a wavelength. So this distance here is a quarter of a wavelength, but node to a node is half a wavelength. Let's have a look at the second harmonic. 
So this is a slightly different stationary wave pattern. We've just added in an extra node and an extra antinode. Once again, the nodes are positions of zero amplitude and the antinodes are positions of maximum amplitude. So here, here, and here, the particles are fixed. Whereas in the, the antinodes, the particles are oscillating with maximum amplitude. As we've seen within, let's just look at this region here. All these particles move down and then they move back up in phase with each other. They all go down and then they go up. They all go down and then they go back up. But if we look at this region over here, while the particles on the left hand side are moving down, the particles on the right are oscillating up, then they oscillate down. They move up, then they go down. They're doing it with the same frequency, but they're doing it in antiphase to the particles on the left hand side of this node in the middle. So what we need to remember is that all particles, once again, have the same frequency. They're all oscillating with different amplitudes. And I'm going to call these nodal gaps. So if, if this is one nodal gap, it's not a really technical term, but I can't think of another way to describe it. And this is a different nodal gap. Within a nodal gap, so just looking at this area here, they're all in phase. Within this nodal gap on the right hand side, they're all in phase. But either side of this central node, on the node and the nodal gap on the left hand side, they move down, the particles on the right are moving up. So we can say that these two are in antiphase. So all the particles on the left move down, while all the particles on the right are moving up. So either side of the node, the particles are in antiphase. You can see that when we get to the third harmonic. So once again, we've just gone to a higher frequency. This is three times the fundamental. In this nodal gap, all the particles are moving down originally with the same frequency, but different amplitudes. The particles in this middle nodal gap, while the ones on the left are going down, these are moving up. And the particles on the, on the nodal gap on the right hand side are moving down. So a few points to notice, all of these ones in this nodal gap are in phase. These are all in phase with each of the other one, other particles within that nodal gap, and all of these are in phase. But if I call these nodal gaps X, Y, and Z, X and Z are in phase, but the particles within Y are in antiphase compared to Z, the particles within Z and within X because the particles within Y are moving up, while the particles within areas X and Z are moving down. We looked before that a node to a node distance is lambda over two. We know that a node to an antinode is a quarter of a wavelength. So what does a full wavelength look like? It's the distance from a node to a node to a third node. So node to node, to node or antinode to antinode to antinode is a complete wavelength. Those are really useful when you're solving problems with stationary waves. So a couple of things just remember about particle motion within stationary waves. We've got two very special positions, nodes, which we label M, which are positions of zero amplitude. The particles are fixed. We also have these positions known as antinodes. And they're the positions of maximum amplitude. Whenever we look at station waves, it's important to remember that the distance from a node to an antinode is quarter of a wavelength. From a node to a node or an antinode to an antinode, that's half a wavelength. And if you want the complete wavelength, you've got to go from a node to a node to a third node or antinode to antinode to antinode is equal to a wavelength. On any stationary wave, all of the points oscillate with the same frequency. Now let's have a look at what, if we look at the particle motion within two nodes. So I'm just gonna look at an area such as this bit here, which I'll call area A. 
within area A, they're all oscillating the same frequency. They're all in phase with each other because they're all moving down, but they're oscillating with different amplitudes. If we look at two adjacent nodal gaps, so area A compared to area B, all the particles are still oscillating with the same frequency, but the particles in nodal gap A are in antiphase with those in nodal gap B. So in A, they're moving down, while those in B are moving up. Really important to remember. So that's all you have to remember about particle motion on stationary waves. Once you can get your head around what's going on and you just start drawing the errors, you'll start to see that which particles are in phase and which ones are in antiphase with other regions. That's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.